Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on STQB Foundation Examination. We are finally done with the first five chapters or the five chapters of this curriculum and we are finally at the end. We are looking at the chapter 6 which is tool support for testing. This chapter is compared to all the chapters are quite small and having only limited topics about understanding on the tool support for testing where you will be understanding a lot of tool inputs on how they can assist you with your day-to-day -day profile or work, uh, workflow within the testing practices in your portfolio. So we'll be looking more on understanding that how these tools can benefit you and also what are the risks being involved as a part of it. So the curriculum basically include a lot of other things like you know the types of testing tools, how the tools are being classified into different categories and what different types of tools do we really have to assist our process with. And when you talk about the 6.2, the effective use of tools, we're looking at uh, the potential benefits involved while using a tool and also the risk, uh, you know, encountered as a part of taking help of the tools within your process. So all we need to say that we really don't have any kind of drawbacks associated with any type of tools, but we just say the risk because if ignored, it can turn into a risk within your process and the project can be suspended or terminated at any point of time if ignored. The last topic of this session or this chapter as well would be to introducing a tool into the organization that how generally you select a tool, what's the POC, what's the pilot project, and what are the success factors involved with having a tool implementation within the organization. So let's get going with it where we will be starting with the 6.1 in this tutorial and understanding what are the types of test tools. But before that, we have got some basic inputs on understanding that how tools can support our testing process and what are the benefits which can be achieved or the areas where we can really take help of the tools, uh, not mandatory at every place, but there are certain activities which would require some kind of assistance with help of the tools and they can really help you a lot compared to the manual approach. So we have got first one here that tools that are directly used in testing such as test execution tool where uh, they don't really assist you rather it helps you with uh, overcoming the time barrier or human errors and so on where you can just uh, directly use the tools for execution and could help you to a very high extent. When you look at the second point here, the tools that help to manage the requirements. So we do also have certain tools which can manage your entire test where or the test resources within a systematic manner of an organized tool, which basically helps you with ease of access or maybe you know accessing the information within the tool and also about creating some kind of uh, you know traceability which would be easy when you have it within a tool rather than having it somewhere outside in some kind of Excel or Word documents. So there are several benefits of uh, such kind of tools which can be associated we do have tools which are used for investigation and evaluation. For example, like when you talk about the non-functional characteristics of the application. So investigation deals with like monitoring tool which can monitor certain aspects of the tool. And you can also evaluate some dynamic analysis of the tool like performance or security parameters or even about like data warehousing or something like that. And generally, you know, we just say that anything which assists you with the process to make it more better and efficient, you call it as a test tool even including your Excel sheets. So when we talk about making use of Excel sheets to manage your data, you can say it as one of the eight to support you in your testing process. So even an Excel can be called as, or Excel sheet can be called as a test tool to support your testing process. Beyond that, obviously, uh, we do have a lot of other benefits uh, about making use of uh, a uh, tool, for example, what, what could be the more context areas like improving the efficiency of the test activities by repeating the automatic, automating the repetitive tasks. So generally when it comes to repetition of certain activities, you can you know opt for automation. Improve the efficiency of test activities by supporting manual test activities uh, through the test process that's relevant to the test management tools where some of the manual testing activities can be well managed within the tool and the entire process can be groomed well with help of the tools where doing it uh, externally would be quite difficult and hectic to manage. 
improve the quality of the test activities by allowing or more for more consistent testing and a higher level of defect reproducibility so when you talk about consistency it becomes simpler and easier with help of the tools but when a simple like say for example one of one user's perception is different from the second ones so one person thinks the requirement is something like this and the second person have a different perception on that. So every individual would go with a different result or outcome on that. But when you talk about such tools will be more consistent when compared to human beings. So that's the reason we have a support for consistency as well. We talk about automated activities that cannot be executed manually. For example, performance testing, when you talk about, we can have a manual test done for 5 to 10 users, which is uh, within the budget and quite practically executable and can also give you some real-time statistics to help you define such things. But when it comes to the uh, you know understanding on the large scale like you know having thousand users simultaneously when you talk about the applications like linkedin facebook where at least one million people are live at any point of time and you would like to do such kind of testing obviously that would not be possible manually and obvi even if you try doing that you know you won't get the real-time statistics or the coordination and it could be quite expensive which might be beyond the budget of the entire project Increasing reliability of the testing, obviously, uh, you know, some test levels, some tools can really help you do certain things which manually would be quite complicated. So things are there where the tools are playing a very vital role and taking use of such tools at certain point of time or the right point of time would be more beneficial compared to general things or doing it manually yourself. The next important topic of this uh, section is all about the tool classifications. So the more important thing is to make sure that you know the tool categories and the types of tools. So if you just remember that the types of tools would be more than enough to answer the question from this section because we know the tool already and we will be, we would have been using these tools uh, from a long time. So all we need to just remember that where does it fall in which category so the very first category is tool support for management of testing and test fair where we have the tools like test management tools requirement management tools defect management tools or configuration management tools but if you see it more importantly like requirement management tools specially meant for requirement man management defect is another separate tool only for defect management tools whereas configuration management is again limited to the version control but if you are going or opting for a test management tool all these options comes as inbuilt to that which makes more easier to have traceability between the different components of that so another the next category similarly we have like tool support for static testing so now we know what static testing is all about where we look at the requirements or documentation the work products what you create following that you talk about the design the code and all to be reviewed before executing them practically so we have review tools we have static analysis tools and we do have modeling tools for uml or control flow diagrams or even business models the d here represents that it was it is basically uh, meant for developers or generally used by developers whereas other tools can be used by anyone so uh, the d uh, represented here is equally important when you have to really answer a question in the examination sometimes they can ask you which one of the given option consists of a tool which uh, is specially meant for developers so one of these d things will be given as the right option another would be different but don't expect the D representation in the right examination, okay? Because that would be really a hint to get the right answer, but they won't do that. The next category is tool support for test design and implementation, where we have certain tools which can convert your requirement description into test cases. Like if you're a user of ALM, we can see such examples there. Here, you don't really have to write your test cases or invest your time in writing test cases you can just directly convert your requirement description into the uh, test cases which would be saving a lot of time for you also we have test data preparation tools certain tools which can help you prepare a random set of test data within the given given boundary limits and that data can be used for execution the next set of tools we have is tool support for test execution and logging which basically helps you with the uh, execution of the test and also logging the result for example coverage measurement tool which is used by developers test hardness or unit test framework tool like JUnit, NUnit and XUnit test execution tool itself like the functional execution like selenium or UFT or RFT 
these are the tools which can do with the functional execution and the test comparator there are certain tools which are only used for comparing the expected with the actual so the test comparators are basically to map those expected and actual give you a status on pass or fail with respect to your execution the next category is tool support for some additional things like performance and monitoring we do have performance testing tool like jmeter uh, we have load test we have load runner monitoring tools like site scope and uh, we can also use uh, many other tools like that and dynamic analysis tools which are especially used by developer on the server side for monitoring like the memory leak or hits per second page loaded per second cpu to cpu utilization and those kind of things which can be measured using the dynamic analysis tools and that are mainly for the developers of course because we do not understand those things the last category here to remember is the tool support for some specialized testing needs like when you talk about some specific needs which are away from all these basic categories like tool support for data quality assessment or data conversion and migration so when you talk about etl testing or you talk about the data warehousing where you know a lot of companies deal with such data as we talk about uh, the online uh, e-commerce websites or talk about facebook you talk about google or talk about gmail they manage a lot of data every time or generally when you talk about the banking or any e-commerce site would be the best example because they keep on changing the information on the website on daily basis and they have a lot of data to deal with that could be the product description the product price product details the pictures and they keep on modifying them on the daily basis and they would have some specific needs to deal with such things and that would be really helpful if they can have such assistance on the process so these are the things to be considered as a part of this tutorial where we talk about the types of test tools where we understand that what exactly the tool is all all about how it can assist you with the process what are the uh, classification of the tools different categories and which are the specific tools which are only meant for the developers and that will be one of the catch to answer some of the questions from this chapter so we are done with the very first topic of the 6th chapter we'll be looking ahead for the next tutorial on 6.2 about the potential benefits and drawbacks involved of using a tool so we'll be looking ahead on the next tutorial coming up soon so stay tuned for more videos and tutorials here in case you have any queries feel free to comment it below I'll be there to assist you with that. So thanks for watching team. Take care. This is all for now. We have more videos coming up on the upcoming tutorials and also on the upcoming chapters of this uh, tutorial. So stay tuned for more videos. Do hit the bell icon for getting notified about the latest videos and in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe as early as possible because we'll be having more videos about technologies and testing coming up back after this right after this so uh, stay tuned and uh, till then enjoy learning happy learning take care